This is Ask the Experts, small group sessions for English language teachers. So thank <laughs> you very go. much for being here, for joining us. All right. So Annie, All right. can you start? Yeah. Good. Um, thank you very much, first of all, Jason, for uh, accepting my request to, to be part of, of this uh, group discussion. My name is Annie Altamirano. I'm originally from the city of Punta Alta in the province of Buenos Aires, Argentina but I've been living in Spain for the last 17 years. Mm -hmm. um, I teach very little right now. Um, I work for a, a language school that specializes in teaching in company classes in Madrid, and I am a course designer. And, um, but most of my time right now is devoted to writing. I, I write for mainly right now for Cambridge University Press. And I am also a teacher trainer. Great. So, uh, oh, uh, well, I, and I'm also sure. the vice president of TESOL Spain and, uh, and also its liaison officer. Fantastic. So, Do you have I, a question for uh, Gustavo? Yes. Oh, good. Yes. My question is, um, it's very important to help our students become aware of the cultural differences that exist, that exist between the target culture and their own culture, which in some cases oh, yeah. is really big. Some language and some gestures can be really offensive in one culture, but completely normal in another. So how do you teach this aspect of cultural awareness to students, particularly not just with adults, because it would be quite easy, but with young adults or even minors? I mean, no, okay. by minors, I mean, uh, Teenagers, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a, that's a very very good question. Uh, uh, at present, I am not teaching very young learners. In fact, I have never taught very very young learners. No, I, have been I, I, I mean from, teenagers. Yeah. Teenagers, teenagers, teenagers. Okay, you, you wouldn't do I'm, this with very young learners, of course not. I think, and I hope you agree with me. All of you agree with me that uh, uh, everybody all, all the time talks about IQ, intelligent quotient. But I think we need to start developing from a very early stage the CQ. It would be the cultural quotient. Because exactly. I think that we are preparing our students to be global citizens of the world that will be in touch and will be interacting with people from all over the world, even without traveling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that we need to be to make to make them aware of how rude or how offensive they might be, even unconsciously, for not knowing certain uh, gestures or some body language expressions, as you mentioned. And I think that something that, that I do is whatever uh, topic appears on, on, on a given course book, I will have to make a connection to some cultural uh, aspects. If you're teaching, for example, something as simple as nationalities, mm -hmm. I would go online and Google something and find some traditional things in that culture. Uh, something that, uh, and this is from experience, my first, Jason, if you allow me, my first time in London, I think, Annie, you know about this, I was with a friend at a cafe and I signaled to the waiter, two coffees, please. And the waiter came to me in a very polite way and said, you don't need to be so rude, sir. And I had no idea why he was saying that. And I was totally unaware that this in England meant the double F word. Mm -hmm. And I was totally unaware and I was being rude uh, unconsciously. I, I, I couldn't find a way to apologize enough for not being able to understand what I had done. Yeah. So I think that we need to, uh, to, to, to work with a meaningful task or raising awareness. Uh, uh, aware raising tasks mm -hmm. that will help the students see how uh, their not knowing may impact yeah, their communication. Yeah? And I will use, for example, stereotypes. Mm -hmm. I will start uh, uh, breaking down stereotypes because uh, and for young adults and even teenagers, I use and I strongly recommend watching this talk by Chimamanda Adichie, yeah. which is called The Danger of a Single Story. Mm -hmm. 
mind blowing. And it's very easy to understand, yeah? And it's a way of presenting them with real life uh, anecdotes and the, the importance of, of not trusting stereotypes. Because she says, it's not that stereotypes are wrong, it's that they are incomplete. And I love that. And so when you tell uh, the, the same story over and over again about a certain person, that what that person will eventually become. So I will work, Annie, with stereotypes, with making a connection to real life from any topic presented in the course book, yes? And by bringing to class their prior knowledge, yeah? And they're activating the schemata. By, in that way, I think I will be paving the way into incorporating this question of cultural awareness in, in my classes. I, I think it's totally important. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gustavo. No, thank you I, for I your have, question. I have found the link uh, for Chinamanda's uh, talk. She's oh, thank you for sharing of, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, thank yeah, you. She's, yeah. she's one of my favorite writers. She's fantastic. Yeah, she is. Mm. She is. Yeah, thank you, thank you for this. No, thank you. <laughs> Great. And, and we'll move on, but that doesn't mean we can't return to certain things later. Okay. Let's make sure everybody Great. has their chance to ask their questions. And then uh, if we have more time and we want to do some follow-up, that would be great. I, I don't see Christina here. So Andrea Mosconi, could you be next? Okay. <laughs> Hello. Okay. okay. So what is your question? Well, my question is, could you tell us some nice brain breaks that you enjoy doing with your students at any levels? Because, well, maybe, I don't know what level you are working at at the moment. Yeah. But I work I, with I, little I, children I, and up to adults. So I yeah. may. I, I, I teach uh, different, uh, I don't teach, uh, I teach all levels, mm -hmm. but just my, the, the age levels are different. I teach uh, young adults and adults. That's what I'm doing right now. And okay. all my face-to-face -face lessons have been, turned into online lessons. And uh, your question is very interesting because brain breaks are extremely essential, mm -hmm. extremely important to keep the oxygen in the brain flowing and working effectively. So every 15 minutes with my adult students, I have a brain break. And that would be like, for example, I, I love working I, with adults. I don't use uh, a lot of TPR. That's something that you can do with very young learners. Yes, yeah. ask them to move, for example. Now, find something yellow that you have near you and bring it and share it. So you will ask them to move around in the house, find something and bring it to the camera. Or maybe you can do breathing exercises. But what I do sometimes, and this is something that uh, I rely a lot on visual things, is for example, I work with optical illusions. And sometimes I take just one or two minutes from the class. Okay, so what, do you, what can you see here? And if you allow me, Andrea, and if Samara allows me here, I will make a point here because, Samara, are you there? I want to see if I can share something. She, yeah, right. Samara, can, can I share it? something yeah. of what our private conversation the other day? Yes, yeah, sure. Great. Because I learned a whole deal from Samara when Samara... She ends me and she said, I am blind. And she attended my webinar. She loved the webinar, but I, she made me realize that all my activity had been focusing on visual scaffolding mm. of the task. Yeah. And I realized that I had never been trained in, mm. my, in my years of, as a teacher to, to teach someone who is visually impaired. And so, Samara, I want to thank you very much because she shared with me some sites in which, uh, where I could get some tips and techniques to deal with that because I realized that I had not taken into account, yeah, people with some kind of, I mean, visual difficulties, yeah? And that's why I want to publicly thank you, Samara, for, uh, for, for making me know this. And of course, open me, opening a door to me of doing some research on how to deal with uh, including yeah, uh, people with certain learning uh, disabilities, or certain disabilities, yeah? So I'm just here talking about uh, brain breaks using um, like optical illusions, 
right? And I see that maybe Samara will be left out mm. and it's not fair, right? So the thing is that we need to cater for everybody's uh, uh, capabilities, yeah? And so this is some food for thought for me and I will need to keep working on that to see how from now on uh, I will incorporate brain breaks in my talks, not in my classes, because in my classes I know my students right. and I know what I can do with them. But I, so in my classes, I use sometimes um, this question of, um, as I said, I, I drew a blank now, optical illusions. Optical illusions sometimes right. I, I play a little bit of a song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I switch into Spanish and we share something in Spanish. And when we switch into our language one, that is like a slap on the biological brain. Uh -oh. That's what, not what the brain was expecting. And that, believe it or not, gives the brain more oxygen to keep paying attention for 10 to 15 minutes more. Mm. So, and I always add the surprise element through mm. music, to breathing exercises. So maybe uh, something that, that I do that is uh, something with its uh, TPR is like asking the students to stand up and start like doing this. Five, four, three, two, one. Then with the left hand, five through five, four, three, two, one. With them, with the right leg, Five, four, three, two, one, and then with the left leg, mm. and then you you go four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, and then three, two, one, three, two, one, then two, one, two, and this like moving. They love it. I, yeah. I do that with little ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Old, less, and they love it. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Less than one minute, and then the brain has gotten more oxygen, and they can pay. Uh, they, they can keep paying attention to the focus of the class. Mm. Hello, Andrea. There you are. Uh, the, the other Andrea. So <laughs> Hello, Andrea. Are we, are, we, are, we are friends on Facebook with, with the new Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andrea, how, how I somehow answer your question about brain breaks? Yes, of course. If you work with little yes. ones, the brain breaks should be like uh, uh, at shorter intervals of time. Mm. That's why I don't know if any of the people, of the teachers here teach very yeah. young learners, but I think mm. that uh, I, hats off to you. You are, you are so resourceful. <laughs> yes, I can't see myself teaching very young learners. I have never done it, and mm -hmm. I don't think I have the, the, of course, the expertise and the experience, and I don't have the energy, the, the right, <laughs> the, maybe, yes, and maybe the energy to teach very young learners. So hats off to you, Andrea, if you teach very young learners. Actually, uh, with four and five, we should do it every five, seven, ten minutes, the maximum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they well, you know that, that yeah, the uh, there's, I, there's uh, some, some research that says that in order to estimate the, our students' attention span, you have to take their age plus two. Mm. So basically, if you're teaching five-year-olds, plus two, seven minutes tops is what they will be able to pay attention to the, to the activity if they are engaged and the task mm -hmm. is meaningful and relevant. Mm -hmm. So that's what you, what you said is, is really important. Yeah. Every five to six minutes, brain break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jason, do we have any other questions? Yes. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, th thank you, Andrea. And moving on to uh, Andrea number two or number three or number one. <laughs> so uh, we have uh, a question A question from Andrea from Sharing Materials. Andrea, if you are here, I see you're on and off here. I am. I am. Uh, hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. Well, uh, my, my question um, is uh, mainly personal. Uh, for my learning, my personal learning, and uh, for my students as well. How, how can we uh, learn or how can my students learn phrasal verbs besides from examples, <laughs> and from the typical, wow. the typical um, activities that we are accustomed to? Yeah. Because I have a, a big problem with phrasal verbs and, preposition, uh, and prepositions as well yeah. uh, in my learning and yeah. I, I believe that I am not uh, learning them yeah. in the correct way. Well, uh, of Andre, course I should, know, I should know them but yeah, the, very I'm, I'm going to be very honest, very honest and very, this is a very personal idea. 
Most of us here are non-native speakers of English, and I personally feel that I know a lot of phrasal verbs, but I don't use them naturally. I don't use them in everyday conversation. The same happens to me with question tags. I know how to teach them, but I don't use them naturally. So I think that I, in my case, I don't expose my students enough to phrasal verbs because I don't use them myself. And I think that one of the best ways to, to get them acquire, not learn the phrasal verbs is by exposure. Mm. And I'm not exposing them because I'm not using them myself. Mm. Yeah. And that's something that I, I, I am aware of and I try to do that. But the other thing is that I try to speak in English most of the time to my students to expose them to language too. And you know what? And this is that I, that I always mention Paul Seligson. He has this idea of a Latino friendly pedagogy. And he says that there are 60% of words in English that are similar to Spanish. Mm -hmm. And if you say, for example, I can't put up with this weather anymore, the <laughs> students will get lost. But if you tell them, uh, Jason, do you speak Spanish? <laughs> Poquito, sí. Poquito, okay. No, because uh, most of the, 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 the participants here speak Spanish. If you tell the students, uh, uh, I can't tolerate this weather anymore. They will understand, yeah? Because tolerate is much more similar to tolerar in Spanish than put up with. Then as they grow in the level, I start using phrasal verbs, mm -hmm. right? But at the very beginning, of course, Andre, I teach phrasal verbs in context. I never tell them this is the mm -hmm. phrasal verb. Right. If you teach routines, I say, I get up at seven o'clock, I wake up at six o'clock. You, they don't need to learn that that is a phrase of verb, right? So they learn in context. And you know that when you teach vocabulary to kids, you, you cannot teach vocabulary in isolation. You have to present them with a meaningful chunk, mm. yeah? So, with, so they can infer meaning and they learn the whole expression. It, I mean, not with a phrase of verb, but if you are teaching colors, don't teach them just yellow. Teach them the sun is yellow, for example, or an apple is red. I don't know. So they can have something to uh, uh, to cling on, yeah, what they are learning. When I start teaching phrasal verbs, uh, many phrasal verbs are can be uh, represented physically, mm. yeah, in some cases. And whenever I have to teach phrasal verbs, for example, with down or up, you know, I use. Somebody's uh, talking, I don't know. Uh, I, I use like uh, rebus puzzles. Is uh, rebus puzzles, is, I, I learned them when I was a student and they are visual images that somehow can help you uh, make a connection to the phrasal verb. And for example, if the, uh, I don't know, it's, uh, I don't know, pull down, pull down. I would write the word pulled with all the letters falling down mm -hmm. so they will know that the the the, the 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 movement of the direction of the letters is down ah pull down and they will make a connection to the visual scaffolding that i am providing them with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that has helped me a lot and of course number one tip is context mm -hmm. you cannot learn phrasal verse without a context I remember when, when I was a, a student at a teacher training college and my level of English was less than first certificate and I had to study phrasal verse in language one. I remember having a kind of mnemonics technique, yeah? And writing like uh, shapes, like triangles or square to the definitions that were similar. And I remember learning them by making connections to my own mnemonics techniques. Yeah, because I remember studying from the dictionary. And trust me, when I had to study get and all the phrasal verbs with oh, get, well. it was like three pages from the dictionary. And then the and next one, like, and then the one after that is go. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. In alphabetical exactly. order. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Andre, just to make a long story short, context. Uh, whenever possible, use some visual help to, 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 to help them make a connection, right? If in, and then, uh, um, I don't know, just use them naturally, exposure. 
exposure mm. because there will be a time when your students will be using GitHub without even realizing that they are doing it. Yeah? So I don't know if somehow I am answering your question. Yes. As I teach adults, this works for me. Mm. Yes. Excellent, excellent. And uh, again, we have time and, and we may, we can come back to any of these question, uh, questions okay. and answers. So if anyone's you know writing things down, thinking of something Gustavo is saying and wanting to comment on it or ask another question, yeah. that is perfectly fine. We're gonna move yeah. things over now yes, to- Yes, uh, and please oh. feel, free, feel, feel free to make comments on what I'm saying because what I'm saying is what have been working for me. Uh, it's not that it's, I mean, and I think that this is very important, Jason, because I can share what, what has worked with my students, mm. but it not necessarily means that that will work with yours. Of course, because of course. Of and, and, differences, and, that's, and that's the fundamental reason why we want to have every month more different teachers coming in uh, and, and maybe answering some of the same questions, uh, but in different ways. And uh, I have... Mm -hmm. So much I'd love to say about phrasal verbs, but it would take the rest of our time, so I'm not going to do it. No, but I think that something I agree entirely with what you're saying. Two things uh, that I think are the most important in context and exposure. And you're yeah. saying that you think po quite possibly the students aren't acquiring phrasal verbs as much as they would not because you're not presenting them the right way in context, but because they're not getting enough repetition and exposure to them. And I think that's absolutely yeah. correct. And I think that's yeah. what happens in, you know, nine out of 10 uh, classrooms, because there's just a question of yeah. time and, and how often those the students can see and hear those verbs. Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, the things you mentioned, games, songs uh, are huge for phrasal verbs, because if they're listening to them outside of class, there's some visuals, you know, up, down, yeah. uh, like you mentioned, uh, that can provide the exposure. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, phrasal verbs Jason, I was gonna we say, could talk about for hours and hours. Fast yeah, fast. I was going to say that as I am not a native speaker of English, and I don't use phrasal verse enough, mm. I expose my students through songs all the time mm -hmm. and through chants from series and movies yeah, yeah. Yeah, all the time. It's like, I don't know if you will agree with me, guys, but there, there's been a moment in my life that I, when I, I used to go to the cinema with a notepad, <laughs> taking down notes. And yeah, now you can I do mean, it I at home with Netflix. <laughs> now, yeah, exactly. But I stopped enjoying the movies because I was always looking for the pedagogical thing from it. How, what can I, I mean, how can I use this to teach? Yeah. And this has helped me a lot. And yeah. in fact, uh, well, you know, Jay, that I love music. I have songs and song lists in my computer that for conditionals, for, for grammar patterns, and yeah. even for phrasal verbs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's great. It's great. It's great. Okay, well, yeah. let's 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 so, keep going. But uh, I, I'm saying that especially because I just this is one of my favorite questions. So when I saw Andrea asked it, I was like, we need to have a phrasal verb uh, webinar. I think we we it would we be will. wonderful. We absolutely that, will. That would be great. We, we will. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, Maria Jose, hello. Ah, uh, Majo. Yes, Majo. Yes, I, uh, sorry, Hello. I have it here as, as Maria Jose uh, Merlo, but it's Maho. Okay, hello, Maho. Hey. Can you just tell us? Uh, Maho. Yes, hi, Maho, where you, where you teach and your question for Gustavo, please. Well, I'm uh, from Santo Tomé Corrientes. I teach uh, in, a, in a, a private school. I have um, four, six, and six uh, forms. Mm. Um, but with four and six, and six I, I can teach every day. I can teach all the time. Um, I have um, the, uh, WhatsApp uh, mm. text mm. with them and everything. But with the six form. Uh, at at, the, at first, they can they can all of them uh, have my glasses, but after winter holidays, I only have three. Wow! And I I today we I I I talk with my my colleagues 
at the, uh, at the school. Um, all of them tell me that they have five or three or uh, uh, nobody can, um, all the students come <laughs> with classes. So I need to know what can I do um, mm. because I, I made, I, I use um, avatar, the big Moji classes. Yeah. I made classes with, I don't know, videos. Um, many day. I yeah. watch every page in English, in Spanish. Uh, I don't know what can I do more. Yeah. I need but, them want to come to my classes. Yeah, but that, this is, again, all my answers will be very personal. I think that it's very difficult to measure engagement right mm -hmm. now because we are all still learning how the system works. Mm. And uh, we didn't expect this quarantine was going to be for so long. So we may have used up all our resources at the very beginning. So that now we are running out of ideas. We are running out of uh, elements to surprise our students because we have done everything, yeah, because we were learning on the go. And I think that uh, everybody's tired. Everybody's tired because being in front of a screen is, uh, is not only time consuming, it's but it's, a, it, it's exhausting, yeah, it's exhausting. Yeah, and the thing is that, um, I, I don't know, um, this, I, 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 uh, many of them are a little bit sick and tired of being exposed all the time to be uh, on camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so uh, sometimes they don't, they, they, they don't want to participate of the class because the teacher will force them to have the camera on. And I will disagree with that because in my case, I mean, I am just running this question and answer session between my bed and the wall. Mm. And I don't know if I want to, f to share the privacy of my bedroom, yeah, <laughs> with the people attending this question and answer session. So I have a virtual background. So having a virtual background for me helps me feel more at ease mm. I, uh, on being in front of a camera. But not everybody has that possibility. And some people will just turn the camera off because who knows what's going on yeah. in their houses. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so uh, I, I don't think that we, it should be, uh, I mean, totally, it should be mandatory to get the students to have the cameras on. Because honestly, we all have, I, I read somewhere, uh, somebody who said, we are not on the same, uh, no, we said, we are not on, we, somebody said, we are all on the same boat. Mm. And, I, and somebody said, no, no, we are not on the same boat. Maybe we are on the same storm, mm. but we are on, on different boats. <laughs> and I loved that. I love that because, uh, and again, this is my mea culpa. I have been sharing activities for those students who have access to technology, who, has a, who have a computer, or who, or who have cell phones. But some people do not have access to electricity, to power. Yes? And I haven't been sharing ideas for those students who cannot be rich through, the, through, through technology, through digital technology. And the thing is that, believe it or not, our students, Majo, are under a lot of stress and mm. trauma. Mm. Not only because they have to be sitting in front of a computer when they used to do that only for playing. Yes, but mm. now they are using it for learning. But uh, I mean, the economic recession, I don't know, the social unrest we are all going through, the, uh, believe it or not, food insecurity. Some people may not know what they are going to eat the next day. Yeah, financial worries that the parents have and somehow they are in the air. So the kids being 24 seven indoors, yeah, will inhale all these things and they may be suffering from trauma. And you know what happens when they are under stress? 
right? And under trauma, this reduced the, the, the executive function skills, mm -hmm. yeah? They will not be thinking logically. And also, this disrupt emotional regulation. That's why I think that it, it, it's, it's a must to start incorporating cell to engage our students. And by cell is social and emotional okay. learning. Because we may be teaching content that has nothing to do with what the students need today. Mm. <clears throat> yes, and they can find the content online. So we will need to make the content accessible, meaningful and fun and engaging by involving and engaging them emotionally. Yeah, and I think that maybe we have been offering a lot of possibilities with technology, with ideas, but we are running out of ideas. Yes, and uh, they may get tired of doing the same thing. So if you're going to be using technology to do the, the same thing that we were doing in, on face-to-face -face classes, they will get bored. And they may be showing signs of boredom by, by, by not showing up. Right? So I, I would recommend uh, in, in incorporating the surprise elements all the time and involving and engaging the macro emotionally. Yeah? Not to, uh, what tool will I use to get them to work? No. How will I make them feel to make them want to work in my class? Yeah? And of course, and I am not teaching big, not, uh, big classes, but teaching 60 minutes is not brain compatible. So parents will need to understand that maybe 60 minutes online will not be, will be more effective maybe having 30 minutes, yeah? And not 60 minutes because the students will just lose track and they will lose interest. Yeah. I don't know. Have I answered, Mah Mahou, something from what you were interested yes, I, in knowing um, about? I feel, I feel that they are very uh, happy because uh, they are the last year at school and well, nobody can well, see. So, and, you know what? Uh, More than ever with this age group, uh, with this, this uh, uh, high school, like, with senior high students, Honestly, they are living their worst year in their history because they are not having their prom. They are not having uh, the, the, the in, in Argentina, Jason, we have the, the, this typical uh, midterm trip to uh, Bariloche, that's a place. And, uh, and they don't have that. They don't have, they're missing so much, so many things. And so they are totally totally reluctant to doing anything because they, they are like really depressed, re depressed. So I totally understand what they are going through, Maho. Yes. And it's, I think it it's, must be one of the most difficult challenges mm. you will have as a teacher, you have as a teacher to reach them, to engage them because uh, they yeah. just don't care. Yeah, let, let, I, I want to jump in here. I, I, I yeah. to reinforce everything that uh, Gustavo is saying. I mean, Maho, the first thing to understand, if you don't already, is that uh, <laughs> you say everyone's in the, in the same storm, maybe not in the same type of boat. Uh, as far as teachers are concerned, uh, I think it's also true. Some teachers have, you know, uh, more access to financial resources, com better computers, you know, high-speed internet, all of these things. But in the end... I think it's really useful to think about, you know, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, we are, if you're looking at the pyramid, <laughs> you know, we are everyone, no matter how much money you have, uh, whether you're a teacher or a student, how much access you have, how brilliant you are, how motivated your students are, we're all experiencing this trauma at, to, to a certain degree. And so, you know, if you're facing any of these issues, please, please remember, it's probably because you and or your students are more at the bottom of basic <laughs> needs. Yeah. And it's not going to be possible for their, your, their brains or your yeah. brain to operate the way that you would normally. And don't be so hard on yourself because I think yeah. what you're saying, well, I hear everybody's talking about the same, the same problem. Well, you, 
you know, Jason, I am preparing a, a webinar that I'm going to be running and with, for Andrea uh, for sharing uh, materials. And uh, I think and it has to do, and Majo, with meeting students' authentic needs. So asking them, yeah, what, would, what do you want to do in my class? How can I reach you? Because I am learning. Yes, this is totally new for me. So if you show them that you are vulnerable, that you are also on a learning process, and that you are there for them, meeting them where they are at, yeah, and listen, wanting to listen to them and taking in what they tell you. Say, okay, let's let's okay, let's design a class together. Okay, mm. so help me out, help me out. Mm. That's that would be a great way of reaching them and giving them the voice they have, yeah, but put to a good cause and a good purpose, which is your designing of the class together collaboratively with the students and say, sorry, I thought that maybe watching video was interesting for you. Sorry if I assumed that. So what would you like to do instead of watching a video every class? So listen to them. Let's learn from them mm. because they are the ones who will be really willing to voice their needs, their mm. authentic needs. And trust me, the content per se is not an authentic need for them right now. Yeah, well said, yeah. well said. Uh, Samara, uh, if you could go next because your question continues to talk about online and I think that'd be great. Uh, are, you, are you there, Samara? There she is. Can yeah. you hear me? Yes, we yes, can hear you and we can yeah. see clear. Please go ahead. Can you see me? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, so before my question, I would like to back to, I don't remember if it was Andrea's question, about phrasal verbs. Um, and thank you, Gustavo, for sharing all your ideas about uh, disability. And um, you were talking about phrasal verbs. Yes. And you said that, um, like, you can talk about wake up and um, you can write uh, uh, or draw an image of someone waking up and I was thinking about how we can do it with um, visually impaired students like yeah. you we have to show them for example if you are sleeping then you stop sleeping mm. something like um, they can feel, they can touch. Yeah. Just an um, observation. Yeah, no, um, I was thinking, now that you, that you said that, Mara, would it be possible, <laughs> for example, maybe you can help us here, that, for example, as a teacher, I lie down on the floor, and I say, yeah. oh, I'm going to get up. And when I get up and I stand up, yeah, I my you. Uh -huh. you, will hear, you will hear my voice, from a different perspective, because yeah, I was different. talking when I was lying on the ground, on the floor, and then when I stood up, you, you hear my voice from a different uh, angle. Play so that, that different can play. help you, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking very off the top of my head. Uh, very interesting. Uh, so now about my question is yes. about online, online teaching. Um, I would like to ask if you have already worked with online teaching before the pandemic and, or if you are starting now uh, because I love teaching kids and for them sometimes it's very difficult to teach online. <laughs> no, yes, I see your point. How was your experience? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm learning and I will keep learning because I was reluctant to running webinars before the pandemic started. I am a more like a face-to-face -face thing. I need to be in touch to see how people react. And all of a sudden, I had no other choice, Samara. And uh, I started teaching without having any idea on how to go about online teaching. And it was trial and error. And being totally honest, with my students because I, I didn't even know, for example, the first time I, I shared a video on Zoom, for example, I didn't know that I had to click on an, on an, on an icon that said share computer sound. So I played the video and my students said, 
teacher, teacher, we, we, we don't understand and we can hear. And of course they were listening to the sound coming out of my computer in my room, not in their speakers, in their computers. So, and you know what they told me? Who's, you have to click on share computer sound. Mm. And this is a question of trial and error. For example, I have never used breakout rooms yet in Zoom, on Zoom. I know how they work, but little by little, I have been like uh, doing some research or uh, accessing forums where people ask, how do you work with, work? I mean, and I have discovered so many tutorials, yeah? And so this question of uh, uh, self-learning, that's what I'm doing, mm. yeah? Because honestly, at the very beginning of the pandemic, there were many people running courses on how to use Zoom, what is synchronous and asynchronous learning. Now, four or five months after the pandemic began, that is somehow obsolete. <laughs> because if you haven't had a, tra a formal training on that, you have learned, yeah? You have learned it maybe the hard way by trial and error, what is synchronous, what is asynchronous, and by like fiddling on the features of the of Zoom, Jitsi, uh, uh, Google Meet, uh, Adobe Connect, I don't know the, the, the many platforms that you can use, yeah? You start learning by doing. And I think this is the heart of experiential learning. Yeah, and that yeah. we are showing what we are learning because we are still learning. We don't know what this situation has in store for mm. all of us, mm. teachers and students. So Tamara is, I am learning at the same time as my students yeah, and I let you. them know, and I let them know. Yeah, that, and I always said, say something in terms of uh, when I teach language, the teacher, what does it mean? And in the past, and Annie, you will agree with me, because we're old school, <laughs> we, were, we were really afraid of admitting in front of the students yeah. that we didn't know a word. The teacher was supposed to know everything. And yeah. I, today I tell myself, you know what? I am not a walking dictionary. So That's right. let's learn this word together. And we learn together. We, uh, we build up knowledge together. And the same should happen with technology, Samara. Yes, we are all learning together. And yeah. you can have, they can have, they have a great advantage over us, yeah? Because they know technology is, for them technology is sort of a given. <laughs> and it, do you, do, yeah. Uh, can you share your, yes, can you turn I your face into words? I tend to disagree. Because they are, uh, they know how to use technology when it comes to TikTok, yeah, uh, social true. media, and using their telephone for putting up stupid things on Instagram. True, but not for learning. I, I have a fourteen-year-old niece, <laughs> so I know what yeah. I'm talking about. But then, yeah. when it comes to using Zoom, um, Google Meet, classrooms, etc., they have no idea. Yeah, they are totally that is true. That is true. That and that is, is true. something my, my eldest son, I think you met him in, in the TISO yes, conference. Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, well, Martin teaches online most of his classes right now. And the problem he had at the very beginning was that his teenage students didn't know how to use Zoom. They didn't know what Zoom was. They didn't know what Google Classrooms was. So he had to teach them how to use them. Mm. The supposedly well, the technologically yeah. literate youngsters. Yeah. The thing is that so, neither, neither did we. we yeah. had no, I had no idea how to right. go about this, these apps. But I, uh, that I was aware that I needed to be a little bit ahead of my students. So I did my own trial and error. Yeah. And I even did that, uh, Samara, with my students. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to have students that knew how to deal with uh, some of these tools because I teach English in companies and they were used to having uh, video calls mm -hmm. with uh, their bosses in other countries. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with what you're saying that they are not familiar with using these digital tools for right. learning purposes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Jason, do we have any more questions? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking. I just saw a comment from uh, Beatrice here. Hello, Beatrice. Yes, hello. Hi. I, 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 I got a hear me. I, I do. I got a wonderful email from you. I wasn't sure of what uh, specific question you wanted to answer, ask. So please go ahead now and, and ask. I, okay. I'm really proud and happy uh, to have, um, to, to can uh, be with you. Sorry, not to can. In order to be with you. Okay. I'm a bit nervous because for me, really, it's a pleasure to be don't worry, here don't with worry, you. Don't your monsters. Well, I have a different questions. I teach um, kids. I uh -huh. work uh, at a public school, primary, first, second, and third, and fifth. And I consider that I was listening to you, and I agree, and it's a bit difficult to lead with, uh, especially with first, second graders. Mm -hmm. Most of them uh, are their parents. Uh, who are with them, and you don't know if parents do their homework, but it's not homework. They have to sing or they have to, to watch a certain video. Yeah. But uh, my question was, what do you think about pronunciation, phonics? I am quite interested in that, not only for kids, but for me as well. I would okay. like to... Yes. Uh Beatriz, I don't think I have the authority to tell you anything about this because I have never taught very young learners yes. and I, I, I don't have the experience. So I, I, I would speak from the book and this is not what you need, right? Yeah. So I, uh, honestly, I don't think I have the, the right authority to do no, it. No, but, but go ahead, think, it's important. No, yes. but I think that <laughs> this is, again, yes. what I think that you could do is to work a lot on imitation work. Mm. on imitation work, on imi imitating the sounds, yeah? Uh, if you teach, yeah, yeah? Because that's the way they will learn, by imitating, by repeating them. Mm, mm. But, but I don't know if, uh, yeah, phonics works fantastically well. Mm. Yeah? You have to learn but how to teach phonics. Pho pho you have to learn, I, yes. But phonics, I think that's the that's way that you need. Uh, I don't know, that's, Andrea Mosconi, maybe you, you do, you do teach very young learners, right? Do you work yes. with phonics? Yes, I do. Okay. I, do. Yes. I also teach kids. Uh, kids awesome. and young learners. Maybe you can help Beatrice. Please. Because I don't think... Yeah? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I think if you teach uh, phonics or something like this, uh, you can use songs. I always use songs with, songs with my students. Um, including my brother, he's nine years old, mm -hmm. um, and we try to make them repeat the, the lyrics, mm -hmm. um, not complete, not the, the complete lyrics, mm -hmm. but um, some sentences, each word, and I think you can use um, some games or something to make them talk between them. Yeah. Uh, this is how I work. Yes. So, so the, the thing is that through exposure to repetition, mm. yes, it's a good yeah. way for the for the students to acquire the right sounds. And this is something uh, not with kids, but may, not with very young learners. But uh, I remember when, when I was a student at the Professoral, of, of course, learning all the names of what we do with our tongue when we pronounce sounds. But I never tell them, my students, this is a plosive or a fricative no, or vileca. No, no, no. But I show them what I do with my mouth. Mm. Yeah? So they can see the point of articulation. And you know, believe it or not, many of my teenage students tend to imitate the American accent and they mispronounce some words. I say, hey, what's the mother? What's the mm. mother? Yes. And when I show what's a matter, matter, and they pay attention to, so you can come closer to the camera, you show them, mm. yeah, and you see that they are not pronouncing the right word. Mm. Yeah, I don't tell, no, put the tongue uh, in, in next to, uh, into, I don't know yes. what I do with my tongue. Mm, 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 mm. They don't expect, I do, I do know, yeah, because we, we, were, we were trained for that. Right. But I don't feel the need to teach them, yeah, that other than by imitation, mm. yes. right? Yes, but there is and a by exposure. Yes. Yes. 
there is a question. <laughs> I am not doing what you have told us. Uh -huh. I don't uh, give synchronous up okay. to now. Up to now. Okay. We have a blog with uh, kids and I try to write every, oh. everything what they have to do. <laughs> then we make the translation below <laughs> that, that I don't agree with that, but we have to do it because some parents don't know English, of course. And then I send, for example, videos or uh, audios but I think that I um, we I I need to to give them synchronous uh, lessons. It's uh -huh. important. I think so. I think so. Uh, Andrea Mosconi, did, did you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted to say something about um, uh, phone. No? Actually, what I do with little kids is when I want to focus on one sound, uh, we do funny chants. For example, we want to focus on the sound d. And so we say, mm -hmm. Doña Delia da Datos a Diego Dominguez, something in Spanish, yes. the sound. and they love it. They, they laugh a lot at that, and so they repeat it, and they yeah. practice it for next ah, class. It's wonderful. I used to do that with a, a phonetic teacher at a professorado, and uh -huh. it was great. We have it's learned great, really. Thank you. So I remember that, and I do it yeah, all the time with them. They love chants. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Thank you. Jason, yes, Jason, yes. you're you're the expert here. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and I, I, Beatrice, I understand you, what you're saying about wanting to do synchronous classes, but really, in the end, it's more about the repetition. It's not about uh, you as much as if it's something that they really want to repeat because it's funny, because it sounds good, because it sounds crazy, whatever it is, they want to hear it again, they press play and they yeah. repeat it. So if it's, if it's you know, the, the beginning consonant D, like Andrea was saying, if it's uh, rhymes, especially rhymes, because, you know, if you're trying to teach ph phonics and there are all these exceptions to, you know, all the different ways that, you know, the, the sound E is represented, if you have something that rhymes where you have, you know, all the different spellings of the sound E or the sound A and they can see the lyrics and they repeat enough times, you're finished. There's there's no uh -huh. need for any type of, you know, uh, focus on phonetics. It's 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 just it, it just acquired through the repetition. So the key no, is no, no. the yes. key is the hook. Are they going to want to watch again? You know, is it funny yeah. enough? Is it cool enough? Or and the opposite. Okay, I'm going if, to, if it, if it's too to boring watch. or it's not something yes. where you've thought about who they are and what they would repeat if you haven't thought about that and, or tested it out yeah. and mm -hmm. it's not going to work but it's 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 really about what we keep going back to the exposure the repetition in context in a way that's fun uh, and and well, pleasurable thank you very much so i'm going to search through the internet this there's a type lot of exercises. there's a lot there yeah okay yeah. Do, can you tell me how do i have to search uh, well, you can, you, can, you can start with my videos, no. But I have a lot of songs. <laughs> I have a ah, lot of songs. <laughs> okay. but, but I would, Sandra I would, will kill myself, yes. I, but I would, I, would, I would put in, you know, uh, chants and then the sound, you know, uh, chants, you know, E sound. Ah, song, you know, thank song, you very e much. Sound, you know, learn Great. ESL and you'll, you'll start to see a lot of things. That are Great, right. thank yeah. you very much. Pleasure. Thank you both. So, Jason, I think we have covered everybody's questions. Amazingly, oh, we yes. have done it yeah. in exactly an hour or even just a few minutes short of an no. hour. Hope uh, everyone will be back for future, future uh, featured teachers, which is the big, the big group uh, event, and then this small uh, group event, which, which I love so much, and it's been yeah. great today. So. Thanks. Thanks to yes, you. And thank you very thank, thanks everybody for investing one hour of your day mm. yeah, to be sharing, to be sharing this passion we, we all have, which is teaching. So thank mm. you very much for making this session really, really interactive. Jace, you've been a great host. <laughs> thank you. Thank you once again thank for you. trusting me with this oh. webinar and this <laughs> QA. <laughs> Who and I hope it's guy? been fruitful. Ah, I hope but, it's been fruitful for everybody. So thank you very much once again. Thank yeah. you, Gustavo. And thank, thank you, Jason. You.
I just want to say one more thing uh, to, to thank everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, people have said that they'd really benefit from, from uh, watching these, uh, these videos. So whether we have, you know, six teachers asking questions, 10, 15, the point is it's a small group. It's always very, very useful for other teachers. That's the feedback we're getting to, to uh, watch these videos afterwards. And we get a lot of views on the videos. So it's really, you're doing a great service by being here and, and making this happen. Yeah, so yeah I don't know. Um, you know what, Jace? Uh, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw the number of views <laughs> our webinar had. No, yeah. it was like, when I saw it last week, it was like 8,600. And those are was like mind blowing. Wow. Well, it was it was it was yeah, a great I mean, session, and you have you have a lot of fans out there, and more and more people I think are starting to yeah. to find out about what we're doing with these uh, and sharing more. So please, I need to say, yeah. share share with your friends and colleagues so we can keep things, keep things moving. Yeah. So thank you very much great. once again. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.